name is Eugenia Butler, and uh, The Fire in the Library comes out of my teaching uh, here at SciArc and is very generously supported by the school and Michael Rotundi. And it, it is, in a sense, an, it's an experimental forum. Uh, what I try to do is bring together extraordinary human beings with extraordinary minds uh, uh, to explore the whole idea of dialogue and how century, this time in the century where we're surrounded by layers and layers and layers of secondary information and media and internet and all of the different ways that we, that we are receiving information. It seems to me particularly interesting to to return in the midst of this to a kind of orality, a kind of, 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 of interpersonal, intimate dialogue. So this series is, in a sense, an experiment to, 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 to allow us to play with that and to, to, to understand how ideas are generated, in a sense, by interactions between human beings. We have the great fortune tonight to have with us two wonderful human beings. I, 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 I consider I consider it a, 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 a minor miracle that, it, that I have these two men here with me tonight. Um, on my left is Jerome Rothenberg. Jerome is a poet uh, of, uh, Jerome has published over 50 volumes of poetry and anthologies in the late 60s. Uh, published a, uh, an anthology called The Technicians of the Sacred, which was an examination of, um, uh, what's the word that you used? Um, uh, I, I think pygmy poetry, but it was much more than pygmy poetry. <laughs> it was more than pygmy poetry. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the, 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 the word I, I coined around that time was ethnopoetic. Ethnopoetic, thank you very much and uh, has also won all kinds of grants and awards. And I, 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 I actually, when, I, when, when I, I first heard about you, uh, I asked Jerome to send me um, a resume. And it was so intimidating, it took me a month to call him back. <laughs> it's just absolutely marvelous. And um, on my right is George Herms. Uh, George is a, uh, an artist. Um, George was just uh, in the the uh, the traveling show. The, the what is it called, George? The beat. Beat culture the and the making of America, 1950 to 1965. Thank you very much. And one of the <laughs> George has George uh, grew up in no Northern California. Has worked. Has been an incredibly important influence in in uh, in California and in the 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 on the artists, particularly of the West Coast. Uh, worked with Wally Berman, has published many, many journals. I'm probably leaving a lot of things out here. Let me see if I can see something else. Um, uh, the, um, I, I think that what, what, one of the things that, that ties these two human beings together for me is the, uh, the both, of, uh, both of you have been working really uh, about half a century. You've been working since the middle of the century. And one of the things that we decided that we would focus on, among many things in this conversation, is uh, the, all, the whole idea of looking at the millennium. Here we are at the end of the millennium. Jerome has just published uh, something I hesitate to call an anthology because it's so much more than an anthology. It's called Poems for the Millennium. And it looks at poetry um, for the first, is it, I, I hesitate to talk about it in front of you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> difficult. But it, 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 I, I mean, it, 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 it goes from here. I'll just, I'll, 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 it goes from, from Mallarmé, uh, Valerie, Gertrude Stein, Mina Loy, Pablo Picasso. It's a wonderful interweaving of very important poets and artists. Um, Hans Zarp, Tristan Zara, the Surrealists, the Dadaists. Uh, um, uh, uh, Pablo Neruda, South American poets, Russian poets, black poets, and it's an, it, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing immersal, for me it's an amazing immersal in 
immersion in the, the, the inner workings of the aesthetics at the beginning of the century that created the time that we're really going through right now. That's what I have gotten primarily at first glance. So we talked about perhaps looking, using this as a lens to, among other things, to look at where are we right now and what are these, these, these many influences that these two human beings, who actually met each other, what, in 1957, is that right? No, no, For the we first didn't, time? No, no, oh, no, 76. We didn't, what did you say your name was? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Germs. <laughs> 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 an old term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they usually had a hard on and they, they were wild stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. In the 70s, seven, at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, we met sometime in the 70s. Friends of ours, you know, had met earlier, so there's, you know, there's connections that go back to about, you know, probably 19, you know, 57. But our meeting was reversed in 57, and, and 76, so it's more yeah. like 75 or 76 okay. that uh, we actually uh, met up, uh, and uh, that was already pushing us into the, you know, the latter half of, uh, well, into the second half of the uh, of the 20th century, uh, and I think at that point, well, into, you know, what I would take as the uh, the second great awakening of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of poetry and, uh, and art uh, and during this uh, uh, century. So, uh, you know, in the, the first volume, to my mind, of poems for the millennium, uh, you know, charts, maps, uh, you know, the, the, the first of those, uh, those awakenings. Uh, mm -hmm. From early in the century, uh, you know, until uh, marking a kind of midpoint uh, with the Second World War, uh, uh, the Holocaust, the atomic bomb, uh, uh, the beginning then of a period of, uh, uh, of Cold War uh, from which we have just been uh, emerging, uh, you know, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, you know, things would be changing, but there's, it seems to me, a lot of uncertainty about what that, uh, you know, what that uh, change uh, is, and, you know, maybe that's some of what, uh, uh, of what we can uh, uh, talk about. Uh, you know, the, the second volume, you know, as my charting of it, uh, it would be, uh, could be thought of, you know, if you want, as, you know, as the poetry of the Cold War. I, mm. I, I, would, I would very mm. much hesitate, you know, to put that kind of title on it. Uh, you know, but in a certain sense, it is the, uh, uh, for, you know, specifically people, uh, you know, our age, and there's only a few years that separate us, uh, you know, people our age, uh, uh, you know, the, the Cold War marks the, uh, the, the time of our, uh, of our adulthood. Uh, uh, the, uh, the Second World War uh, you know, is a time of, uh, for us of, uh, of childhood. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, how, however much of a child one was, you know, during that period, you know, there was uh, 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 an awareness of, uh, uh, of, of great events and terrible events uh, taking place and emerging, uh, you know, from that a sense of having come through uh, a certain terror and then you know, with another kind of terror uh, hanging over us and then you know, looking for, uh, as human beings, looking for, for ways out of that, for alternatives uh, to it. And I think that very much marked, you know, so much of what was happening, mm -hmm. uh, you know, during, uh, you know, or early in our uh, lifetime and, uh, you know, and, and many subsequent uh, changes in, uh, uh, in, in in early in the working period of your time. I, I also wanted to, since, min, since, since we have many generations in the room and in the audience, before we get too much further, I wanted to, do we have the carousel there? Is it, have you put your slides in the carousel? Yeah, but let's not look at them. You don't want to look at them no, now? No, okay. No, no, no. Well, do you, want to, um, do, you want to, do you want to read something or would you rather wait? Um, I want to ask Jerry some questions. Yeah. Okay, let's go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. That's okay. 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 Maybe we'll co pass this copy around so that people can. And uh, I jump in in the middle of the century, as Jerry said, uh, and I traveled in the past year with something called, or well, I call it the Beat Circus. It started at the Whitney Museum in New York, went to the Midwest at the Walker, and each stop I set up, and you will see when we show slides, the meat market, uh, a tableau in the assemblage 
Mo, which was a word that was not even coined when I began working in this using found objects. And the Art of Assemblage was a show that came out in 1961, Museum of Modern Art in New York. And the essay, the Bill Sykes, who put it together, starts off with the liberation of words. And the next section is the liberation of objects. Then there's the collage environment. And this, this is how he broke it down. Now, I didn't read the essay until 20 years later when I celebrated uh, in Denver something called SCORE, which was to salute Bill Seitz, who had passed away. And I hand wrote the entire essay uh, down in uh, Laguna Beach. I, my, I had a studio that just burned every afternoon as the sun hit it, so I would go to the beach and copy this essay out. And I found out that there was a whole history to this movement would have saved me so much trouble because people look at my work and they say, what is, that's a bunch of junk, man. What are you trying to do? That's not art. Uh, but Bill Seitz had laid out this history of how uh, the words were liberated at the beginning. And this book takes you further than the beginning of the century uh, and carries through most of my, uh, what I call, breakfast food, these little magazines that, that travel with the beach show and Jerry's work, I mean, a lot of poets, uh, these are the things that you read on the toilet in the morning when you got up, and they kept you going. Now, the, the questions I have for Jerry, if you don't mind, is that okay if I ask him some questions <laughs> about this and, book and that I just came out? For you, you uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you can grill me later. Um, but you can grill the, back, grill the, tea. You can grill the, back <laughs> The, the layout of this book is very beautiful because I do a theater piece called The 20th Century, which, you know, it says 20th Century, a theater piece by George Hearns, which makes it a lot easier for me to deal with this entire subject. Um, and what Jerry has done uh, has what are called forerunners, which are William Blake, some of these names you will know, Whitman, Baudelaire, uh, Emily Dickinson, and the wonderful thing is that Jerry's scope is around the world. It's not just Eurocentric through to here we are in California, a, a beautiful place that has you know, waves of the Orient crashing on the shore. Europe has come to us. Uh, Africa has come through jazz for me personally. Uh, and then the Native American wave has come up here. So there's a, a lot has crashed here in uh, these waves in Southern California. Um, one of the quotes in here is in the introduction. To, uh, there's, the f there's an introduction, there's the forerunners, and then there are these galleries of poets that are universal. And then there's the isms, the, you know, the surrealism, expressionism, uh, futurism. Uh, and most of these poets have sustained me mm -hmm. through, through, and, and nourished me. Now, the, the first question I want to ask uh, I believe it's in the introduction. Uh, you quote a friend of ours, David Anton, who says when deconstruction is brought up, Anton reaches for a pillow. Mm -hmm. Now, I, my question is, what goes on in my mind is somebody out of cuckoo's nest where they took the pillow and put it over someone's head? Is that, is that it? Or does he go to sleep? Well, I, is I, it I, I, to sleep? Yeah, 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 Question yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> David, who is uh, a, a poet, a, a critic, a talker, you know, an exemplary uh, you know, talker who makes the talking into a, a kind of, uh, of, of poetry. Uh, Actually, the quotation... Who inaugurated the series, actually. Uh, he inaugurated, he was this the first... This series, uh, <laughs> the first, yes. ...speaker in the series. Um, <coughs> the, the, the exact quote from, you know, from David was, uh, when I hear the word deconstruction, I reach for my pillow. Uh, you know, that, that, I mean, that's, there's a World War II reference, you know, for those who... Uh, you know, who remember it, uh, uh, you know, variously ascribed to Goering, uh, to Goebbels, uh, to, you know, uh, I, and I've never tracked down to my satisfaction who actually, uh, you know, said it, but, uh, you know, some, uh, some Nazi big shot, you know, who said, when I hear the word culture, I reach for my pistol. Ah. <laughs> So David is playing. You know, is that playing, a good he's, answer he's, or he's, what? He's, he's, play, he's playing off, uh, off that. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, okay. uh, a little bit of uh, you know fatigue setting in at the amount of uh, 
uh, space given to, you know, to quote theory, you know, deconstruction mm -hmm. uh, and so forth, particularly if you hang out in academic circles where, uh, you know, many of us for better or worse have been hanging out for a number of years. Uh, and, uh, and, and putting that in contrast uh, to the ongoing conversation about poetry and, and art, you know, mm -hmm. as conducted by artists and, uh, uh, and, and, and poets. You know, who are also, you know, very much into, uh, you know, the the meaning of their work, or uh, the uh, uh, the, the, the basic nature, the context of the work, the history of the work. Uh, you know, all of us are into it, and, and yet somehow, you know, something else has sprung up around us. Uh, you know, with a lot of accreditation in universities and uh, uh, and certain intellectual circles, uh, uh, you know, sometimes going on the intriguing name of theory. You know, this, mm. uh, you know. Maybe capital T theory, sometimes called French theory, uh, you know, and uh, you know, including some interesting writing, but seems to have you know pushed down, uh, you know, that kind of autonomous uh, self-creation, you know, on on the part of those, of, uh, of, of those making uh, you know, uh, poetry, writing novels. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, so there's a question of autonomy. I, I used to think, uh, in, in, in a way, a question of autonomy is. Um, uh, as, it, uh, as it would confront Native Americans uh, uh, in, in the face of, uh, of uh, the anthropological project, you know, who was to define the Native American? You know, the anthropologist, you know, or the uh, you know, or the natives. Now, the, the anthropologist could put up a good argument for you know, for the, uh, you know, the interpretation from the outside. You know, but the resentment at that, the resentment of having one's self autonomy taken away from one's authority, you know, to speak, to uh, uh, you know, to formulate. The, the identity, you know, and I, I think, uh, uh, you know, so David, in uh, you know, in his own way, though, uh, you know, a, a master of many kinds of, uh, you know, of theory, comes up with, uh, you know, easily, you know, maybe a little glibly, uh, you know, with, the, mm -hmm. you know, when I hear the word uh, deconstruction, I reach for my pillow. Although in a certain other sense, uh, you know, we are really all deconstructionists. I mean, you how know, are we all? Of, how are we part all? Of our pro because of one part of our project is, you know, is this a dismantling. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a, a breaking of, uh, of, of older forms of art into component parts, and uh, uh, not only an assemblage, but sometimes a reassemblage. But, uh, but 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 implied a, in a, a that breaking, is, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a fascination with the you know with the with the broken mm -hmm. parts of, uh, uh, of, the, of the of the culture. But 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 it seems to me implied in that is 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 is, is an activity <coughs> of art making or poet or, or poetry making, which is. Which is which is fluid, which is which is changing, which is which is is vital in some way. When I think about theory at this point, the word that comes to mind for me is thug, because I mean that's in a sense my my, my experience of, of, of the way s some of this uh, this this academic is you know ascription to theory has has built these walls, which in certain ways are very 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 hard to to, to crack out of, and I. Well, it used to be theory and practice. Well, it used to be theory and practice. Yeah. You know, and they, and they went hand in hand. And when I, I never went to an art school, so when I first, uh, my first teaching job, uh, I wanted to change where it said visual arts to verbal arts because everybody was talking and no one was painting. You know? <laughs> so uh, th this, this, and then, the, then there, was, there was studio art and then there was art history. And I mean, how could you know anything about art history and not want to go in the studio? Or how could you work in the studio and not want to know about art history? So the theory and practice thing, I thought, was like the hand in the glove. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, how could you separate? Mm -hmm. But this separation is deadly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, you know, and now there is, uh, you know, there is a, a, a tendency for theory to focus on theory. Well, absolutely. Absolutely, theory corrupts. Absolutely, right. Theory corrupts absolutely. And you know, by the way, this is a. I, I want to say that that that. You know, if you feel feel that you want to interject something into the conversation, feel free. I mean, one of the reasons that we bring that that I bring the, the this this little raised platform right to the table is so that, in a sense, there's a, a volatility to this that it's that there's that, that we're all involved in this conversation together. So I wanted to just put that out there. So, uh, um, but you have probably have more questions. You had a. You, That's you what I want to know. Do, do do I have permission to ask more questions? <laughs> yeah. uh, do we have? A, here's a question. Yeah. What was taking away autonomy? I oh, the, the, the question of, of the artist autonomy. Yes, what is, what is the threat? Well, the, the, the question of who is to define the, the work, the working of, of, the work of art, the work of the artist. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I think there's, 
you know, certainly been an, an, an ongoing conflict between between artist and, uh, and and critic. You know, sometimes more intense, sometimes less intense. Uh, you know, sometimes with artists taking on for themselves uh, the, the, the role of uh, of, of criticism. Uh, so uh, I, I think there's there's been a struggle throughout the, the, the century by by artists, by many artists, certainly by poets who. You know, mm -hmm. may shoot off at the mouth. Uh, you know, even more than visual artists do. You know, although visual artists, let me tell you, you know, I'm not, I'm not bad. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. And, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and both are capable of shooting uh, and, themselves and in the foot. Uh, you know, so th th there's a kind of uh, uh, somewhere in in, uh, in Louis Zukowski's long poem uh, A. Uh, he speaks with a great tenderness about something that he calls my poetics. You know, I, uh, he loved, uh, you know, I think speaking of his father, you know, he loved, you know, whatever it was, his synagogue, his prayers, you know, you know the way I love my poetics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so a great attachment, you know, to one's poetics. You know, and to have others, you know, come in, you know, as the authoritative sp spokesman in relation to that, you know, and see in this world of theory, uh, you know, you know, where is the Ezra Pound? Where is the Andre Breton? Uh, you know, uh, where is the Tristan Sand? Where are all of these? Uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, all of these people with their engaged poetics, a poetics that comes out of a of a practice of uh, of poetry. You know, and one could transfer that, to, you know, to the to the uh, to the world and the works of uh, of uh, you know visual artists of uh, uh, you know. So, so th th there is a question. You know, at certain points, the question of autonomy uh, you know, comes into it. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, you know, autonomy, and uh, you know, for certain of uh, of, of the arts, uh, a kind of uh, uh, of disregard within within the academy. So, uh, you know, there there are injured feelings. Yeah, I mean, I can. <laughs> if I, let me. If, let me uh, I want to elaborate on that a little bit. Just, I mean, it's it's almost it's my feeling as a as a visual artist that that I found com maybe coming back to the United States this this uh, uh, um, this uh, uh, what's it, this structure that had been built particularly in the academies particularly around the art schools of theorists who were defining what <coughs> art was uh, in a way that excluded it felt like it excluded me and my process in a very vital way and that they were holding the power um, in, in, in they were holding the power of the word. They were, they were the people who were publishing in the magazines. They were describing this world which I had grown up in and experienced all my life as an artist. And suddenly I was seeing this world circumscribed by certain kinds of descriptions which seemed very divisive and very, very, uh, um, very separating. And, 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 but I think that it, 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 it does, and, it, and it's very far away from the, the, the process. That to me, the theory comes out of the the, the, the the risking of the art making, the risking of the, the, the this 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 act of creation, and that you understand theory by 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 throwing yourself off a cliff in a sense with with the work, and that's and you start understanding structure that that through through times of great stress and great 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 risk. Not that there's this idea of what the thing is supposed to be, which is imposed on this 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 very vital human process. Uh, yeah, uh, part of <clears throat> yeah, th this may be a generational thing too. Uh, you know, part of m my recollection of coming very intensely into uh, in, in, into poetry uh, was emerging from a time in, in which there was a uh, what seemed you know finally to be a dominance of criticism, which was then called the new criticism, but the this is a long time when ago. When was this? Uh, 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 oh, I would put it from the uh, period <coughs> immediately after the Second World War, uh, you know, uh, until the uh, sometime around the, the year 1957, mm -hmm. we keep uh, speaking about. Uh, uh, what became very exciting in the middle to late 50s, in, in my recollection, uh, you know, was the emergence of uh, a, a generation of, uh, of poets uh, you know, who kind of took, you know, a, a asserted control over the works. Uh, like you know, whom? Um, oh, well, it's some names that have, uh, you know, have already uh, come up. Uh, uh, the, the, the Beat Poets. Uh, you know, uh, Ginsburg. You know, Ginsburg. Carolyn. You know, uh, uh, a, a name that everyone reckons with. Uh, you know, on the West Coast, uh, 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 
uh, Robert Duncan, uh, 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 two other poets very you know, close to Duncan, uh, Robin Blazer, Charles, uh, um, Robin Blazer, uh, uh, Jack Spicer, uh, in, in a connection with, uh, uh, you know, Charles Olson, who's, you know, a grand theoretician, uh, you know, but also, uh, you know, a powerful, uh, you know, practitioner of, a, of a, uh, in his terms, a new way of, uh, of, of, of doing, uh, you know, poetry. Uh, one uh, theory and practice at that point, you know, seemed to go so closely together, you know, and seemed, uh, you know, to not be especially, uh, you know, beholden uh, to the work of those who at that point seemed to be the dominant, uh, you know, critics. Uh, you know, although there was, uh, uh, you know, certainly reference to, uh, uh, at that time, uh, of uh, philosophers, historians, uh, uh, you know, it was a it was a well-read uh, generation of poets. It was a well-read uh, generation of artists, and there was an interplay between poets and artists. You know, and uh, you know, and that was quite extraordinary. You know, and it seemed for a while, uh, you know, enthralled with that liberation. You know, that one would probably never have to depend on, you know, on a critic again. You know, mm -hmm. and critic. You know, was that, that was literature. You know, and you know, obviously, when one speaks about these things, uh, you know, one speaks about people who were engaged in a kind of, uh, you know, a spiritual quest, uh, you know, you know, whether they stuck with it ultimately or did, you know, at that point, you know, it had all of the earmarks of a, uh, you know, of, of, a, of a spiritual quest and, you know, and, and not another chapter in the history of, uh, of, of literature, something else, mm -hmm. uh, you know, seemed to be going on, you know, and that, for many of us, was also tied up in our minds with, uh, you know, with doing away with the hegemony of criticism. You know, therefore, certain alarm bells go off, uh, you know, when under a, a, a different heading, you know, and speaking a different language, namely French, uh, you know, criticism comes, you know, back in. It may be a more interesting criticism, you know, you know certainly certain figures like Derrida, you know, are, to my mind, you know, more interesting, uh, you know, imaginative writers uh, than, the, uh, uh, than the critics who were forerunners of my generation. But, uh, you know, but that's, uh, you know, that's... Uh, an, an what about right matter. now? Do you think that that's, do you think that, that, that the same relationship between practice and theory is, 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 I mean, you're, you're teaching now. You're you're teaching now. Well, a, a number of uh, you know relatively younger poets mm -hmm. that I'm in, you know close contact mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, are very much involved with uh, with, with theory, you know, and a much easier in uh, you know in relation to theory as it comes out of mm -hmm. France, as it comes under the you know under the designation of uh, of, of deconstruction, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, uh, and and so on. So, uh, uh, you know, a good poet friend companions, uh, you know, like um, uh, you know Charles Bernstein, uh, Lynn Hedginian, and others. You know, probably you know, much more comfortable uh, with mm -hmm. that. You know, I uh, I'm, I'm maybe from time to time a little uh, made a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. by their com their comfort. You know, in, uh, uh, in, in, in the face of that, I, I like the, uh, um, the the you know the rawness of theory as it uh, you know as it seemed to manifest itself from uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from Olson and, uh, and others. Well, there's a new breed coming along. There's a new generation coming in. What I experienced traveling with this beat circus, uh, there were so many young people interested in that Cold War era, you know, repressive, conservative, political climate, lots of censorship. Uh, and what did you do, Daddy, in that war uh, for freedom of expression? And so, there, and my sense is, and I get teary-eyed almost thinking, that there, it's like Cape Canaveral. There's this generation, if you want to talk about generations, on the platform, ready to take off in this incredible, we don't know who they are. I mean, you're talking about the critics, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But this, this, this ship is ready to take off, and it's our job to fill it with the most highest octane mm -hmm. possible uh, by example and, and th like this book which is, is showing, I mean this is great fuel, this is great fuel uh, and this, this, this generation, whatever it is that's, that's going on, the critic that wrote for me in New York a year ago, his name, he's got an art forum day persona where he writes with all the French criticism, he's, that's where his degree is from. And it's, he's got this one day name that he's known for and he writes beautiful essays about art. And at night he's DJ Spooky. Mm -hmm. And he does the thing with the turntables, man, and he's absolutely king of these 
claustrophobic dark rooms with the sound going and he's listening mm -hmm. and those things he's listening I'm watching his hands it's not matching the sound coming off he's on a fucking loop man like he's ahead of me 20 <laughs> seconds and he's and I'm listening to music and he's taking the record off and I you know what I mean so this thing is going on and there are people right now as we speak that are coming along and so and we and we don't know you know what I mean who who the Bretons and the czars are that are coming mm -hmm. along like obviously there I was part of a symposium once called West Coast Duchamp and I said that's Wally Berman who we do, you know who else is there besides him that was the West Coast Duchamp you know so we don't know who who it is that's coming along right now but what we do is we're like these beacon lights you know like come down here you'll crash on the rocks <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa i forget which the way it is that's and supposed why to do go. You want, well, what's, and so, what's it about hmm? crashing on the rocks well because that's it everybody has to crash on their own rocks but now now with Grin ginsburg i'm i'm on the same you know dais with alan at one end and i get up because i'm not going to stay too inches away from this thing, I started storming around the Walker, the Guthrie Theater in, in uh, Minneapolis, and Alan's talking about being on a street corner, talking to Herbert Hunky about the birth of the Beats in 1946. Okay, in 1946, I'm riding a bicycle in a little California town up near Sacramento, and I, I can still see the light coming through the trees, and I'm going along, and I'm setting my lance against the two enemies, tradition and the impossible. And I say to myself, as I'm going along and tooling on the bicycle, you know, if it's been done before, I can do it better. And if it can't be done, I'm the one that can do it. Mm -hmm. So that, while, while Alan and Herbert are talking about the definition of what's a beat, you know, that's where I'm doing. So there's this impulse that came out in the middle of the century, see, because I, I think that, you know, you mentioned the war and that effect. There was a terror, uh, obviously, and that it was followed by another kind of terror in that you thought it was a black and white world where China was our ally, Russia was our ally, Germany and Japan were the enemies. That's how from age five to 10 I was taught and I bought it. You know what I mean? I, I just went along with the program. And then all of a sudden you're supposed to switch around. You know what I mean? And then you're beginning to wonder. And you know, I, I don't know where my particular uh, lust for freedom comes from, uh, except that maybe somewhere along the line and going for the program, I was rewarded with ice cream and I ate it too fast and got the headache. And I said, wait a minute, that's what you get for going along with the program. I'm going to take a 180 degree turn. Uh, <coughs> where, where did the ice cream come in? I got <laughs> that's a reward. That's a reward. You say, be a good boy, you get the ice cream cone, man. Then you get a headache. Um, <coughs> Oh, okay. This is one. Uh, this is out, out of in this the first hundred Can pages. Can I just before yeah. I want to ask you a he question? Wants to ask me. I want to ask you a question uh, before yeah, you ask okay. another question, which is I'm real fascinated by your the metaphor you used of Cape Canaveral and of the oh. high octane fuel. Well, and I want you to elaborate on that. Okay. What's in that fuel? What is it that what? Talk about that. Okay, thing. you see this right here. Uh -huh. I'm 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 embarking on a book called. Uh, 40, right? Because this marks the, my 40th year in show business as an artist, Hermosa Beach, 1957. And so I'm going to, you know, deal with that. So my notes for 40 uh, have to do with intellectual, I mean, I call it threshold, see, because I think we're on a threshold right here. You know, it's going to, we're going to take off. And uh, I just, I, I know my own experience and how it worked. But I see a, um, you know, a, a conference in Geneva about intellectual property rights a few weeks ago. Do you remember reading anything mm -hmm. about this? Because I'm, in my art of assemblage thing, I'm a collage artist. So I tore up and made collages. And collage to me is the medium of the 20th century. And I never asked any of those Life magazine photographers for permission to, to tear up mm -hmm. their things and make these collages, which are now you know, floating around in museums. Um, but on the internet, you've got all, you know, these people who are now printing out. I went over, uh, you know, as part of my thing, and here comes one of my pieces I know nothing about. You know, it just pops off, the, you, you punch my name in, and you can get one of my pieces, you know, out your printer. <laughs> so, you know, and so they want to know who, do, who does this stuff belong to. Well, um, before we get to who it belongs to, it's what's going out, you know, and that's what's so beautiful here is that, that you've got the content uh, that, of what's going out. Um, and what I, what I see is, again, you know, my soapbox, 
our ideas and imagery are going around the world as fast as it's like so insanely beautiful. You can get ideas and imagery around the world so quickly with such speed. Can food be that much farther behind? Mm. If you find mm. out that someone is sick or hurt mm. anywhere in the world. All right, so what happened in this, Jerry, is the fact of our lifetime, if you've got a bar graph, uh, it would go uh, like to the ocean, okay? Uh, to the beginning of time, and that bar graph comes all the way to here, okay? For one billion people on the planet, okay? That's 1850, okay? I'm born in 1935. So, okay, you could add to your bar graph, it took all that w ways to come, okay, 1850, 1935, boom, two billion people, okay? Then, it's like a fucking wave at the beach, man. It's like the greatest surfing wave you've ever seen. That thing goes up. By the end of the century, six billion people. That's the fact of our lives that we're dealing with. That's what's going on right now, is that, that since I'm born, and I've worked on this problem, I don't, the only thing I've been able to come up with, like for a silver lining on this, because all of our problems are involved with this, that, that there, it's tripled since I was born. So that means, it's the only silver lining I've been able to come up with so far. Get, get to the silver lining. The silver lining, Jerry wants to say. There are now three times as many great looking chicks. <laughs> yeah. Your move, Professor. Your move, Professor. Okay. All right. That's enough of you. All right. Yeah, well. So, What's your idea of the silver lining? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not into silver linings. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, why did you I thought, Well, because I thought, I thought finally, <laughs> <laughs> it's about to ask you. But that's what, that's what we're the here for. That's what we're here for. It's mean, the density. I mean, it is that we're experiencing a density that, you, that, that that's never been experienced before on the planet, as far as we know. And the density of ideas, the mm -hmm, density mm -hmm, of imagery. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. every field, every science, there's been this mm -hmm, explosion mm -hmm. of information yeah. and knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, in, in, in the movement of ideas through, th through the internet, the, the, the speed up of, uh, I mean, the, the whole century has been a, a century in which the ability to move and communicate across distances, you know, has been tremendously accelerated. You know, and, uh, you know, I can remember, you know, not even that far back, uh, you know, when, when there was a sense, well, uh, you know, we, we were probably pretty much to the end of, uh, you know, of, uh, of the age of technology, of, uh, you know, of big changes that were going to be brought about through, uh, through science and, you know, where to go from here, uh, you know, and there, there was a kind of a delight in, you know, in turning away from that, going back off into, uh, you know, into wilderness, into the, uh, into the primal life and uh, uh, so getting rid of the, uh, the you know, there's a, uh, a, a very strong, you know, almost machine-breaking tendency at that point, you know, and then, uh, you know, and then the, the computers began to come into, uh, into life, uh, you know, and I think one way or another, most of those I knew, uh, you know, including a lot of, uh, you, know, you know, certainly a lot of back to nature freaks, you know, were into that kind of technology, and that, that you know, that technology, uh, you know, was, the technology uh, of the was different. I, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the technology mm -hmm. that the uh, that the computer brought. Mm -hmm. You know, for a small example, uh, you know, for years I pers persisted with a manual typewriter. Uh, you know, sort of going between manual typewriter and uh, you know, a pencil and fountain pen for you mm -hmm. know for writing purposes. Uh, electric typewriters never particularly a a appealed to me. Uh, you know, they they, they they didn't have very much to uh, to offer. Uh, you know, the first time I truly sat down, you know, with a computer and a, and a word processing program, you know, the, the, for me there the, the was no going back from that. It was, a, you know, it was a machine, you know, that made a, you know, a tremendous amount of difference, uh, particularly because part of my work uh, it involves a, a kind of. Uh, uh, you know, collage, assemblage, called translation. You know, for translation, uh, you know, there was uh, you couldn't beat the uh, you know, the computer. I mean, not not because I had a translation program, uh, you know, but because I could so rapidly make uh, you know make changes and see what it looked like. And uh, you know, in other words, not the writing capacity, but the editing capacity, uh, you know, of the machine. Uh, you know, and on the uh, uh, really uh, you know, pushed forward by that. Uh, you know, I got involved in. Uh, I, I'd always, I'd, I'd love translation. You know, but I'd always been a kind of small-time, uh, you know, translator. Uh, you know, this is a book of, uh, you know, translations from the great collagist artist uh, Kurt Schwitters. 
uh, you know, who's also a, 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 tr a tremendous poet. Uh, you know, and, uh, um, Do you have a favorite piece in there? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, but it's not a translation. <laughs> I mean, it's a favorite piece that I'd like to perform. Uh -huh. you know, and in a moment, I will perform it. Oh, because <laughs> you, know, you raised the possibility. Uh, uh, another, uh, uh, I, uh, I had in the past uh, translated a few short poems of uh, uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, a, you know, an important poet for me from early in, uh, uh, in childhood. Uh, and uh, 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 from a... Uh, a an un previously untranslated and uh, recently rediscovered series uh, called, uh, uh, in using the musical term, Sweets. Uh, and uh, there were about 250 pages of those, you know, and uh, the, the word processor, and, you know, I just, you know, <coughs> went, went through it in a way, I, I don't think I would have had the, I, I don't know if I, I would have endured, you know, with the, uh, with the translation, because I had other poetry to write, you know, but this, uh, it, was, it was a good machine. Uh, you know, and then of course, you know, year by year, the, you know, the the, uh, the change in uh, you know uh, that coming into contact for one, you know, who is inherently a uh, you know a globalist and uh, and so forth, uh, you know, to be able to uh, you know wake up in the morning, correspond with uh, Japan or New Zealand or Russia, uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, it's, you know, the, the whole global village mm. idea, which was a sort of metaphor, uh, you know, begins on, on the sunnier side of the end of the 20th century, you know, take on a certain reality. Yeah, now, being also, a, you know, a, since one side of me is dystopian, uh, you know, we, we, we could also go on to talk about, you know, what kinds of problems, uh, you know, come out of that, uh, uh, you know, potential problems uh, come out of that, uh, uh, that also. Uh, you know, I also like, uh, because you raised the, the, the question of the copyright convention, the copyright meeting in relation uh, to the internet, you know, I, I'm happy that this is another challenge to the copyright uh, uh, laws, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which make it in certain ways, uh, you know, impossible to have a free, you know, communication of the goods of poetry, uh, you know, bet uh, between each other. Uh, you know, for the moment, uh, <laughs> Uh, they haven't found a way to, right. uh, you know, to impose property rights on the internet. You know, uh, they, uh, for the moment, they haven't found a way uh, to uh, uh, make it financially impossible uh, to do publication mm -hmm. on the internet. You know, I have a kind of dystopian confidence. You know that they will find a way. You know that it w won't remain free and open the way it is now. Uh, you know simply because my my experience is that none of these things remain. You know free and open. That, none uh, of which that, that uh, 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 forms of publication mm -hmm. and communication. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, you know, although we will always find ways, yeah, because, to get around, because, no, we'll always find ways to get around. Yeah, because, you know, because art but it's and poetry, an on, but it's an ongoing, it's mm -hmm. an ongoing, it's a, it's a battle. But, but, but art and poetry are gifts. I mean, the, 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 they're 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 one of the places where where we're able to be to be swept away by 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 this 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 mm -hmm. this created beauty of another human being. When there is no, I mean, the transaction is. Is, is so powerful because it is so intimate. And I don't think that, that, that I, I, I mean, it seems to me part, it's part of the, 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 the nature of being human, that that, 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 that transaction, um, it seems to me, will survive in one way yeah. or another. See, the, the magazines that you, know, that you mm -hmm. were talking about, you know, Semina and, 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 and others, uh, you know, were done, uh, you know, you know still, beautiful works that were, were done on a, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a shoestring, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you yeah. know. Uh, I'm still uh, doing it. Yeah. And at a certain point, some some of that mm -hmm. uh, you know change. It's not gone, but, uh, but uh, you know, but uh, a lot of work that should be sent out mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. you know, isn't but sent, maybe the internet you know, is but, another. But, but for the moment, the internet is sending uh, you know things out. You know that don't seem to be part of the market nexus. You know right. that you know yeah. that seem to have a different kind. Uh, you know of existence or a different way of being conveyed. You know, and I find that a very happy uh, circumstance. Except, of course, that uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know what the availability of uh, availability of, of, of internet is, and I don't mm -hmm. know what, what the availability of internet is. You know, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about something. I mean, I want to. There's so there's so many things going on. I want to get grab all of them. But I'm thinking about about the 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 technicians of the sacred. I mean, the the, the idea that in that that in in what in the late '60s you went out and and you must have. Did you go to these? Did you go research these these this this kind of primitive poetry? This, this ethno, the ethnopoetics. I mean, I'm, I, what I'm holding in my hand is, in a sense, this idea of this human being who went out to pick up these individual, non, 
transcribed pieces of human poetry, and how do you, when you hold that in your hand, and you hold this knowledge of the internet, and this, this communication that's feeding us, that's racing around the room, what, what does that feel like? What do you come up with? Well, uh, the, you know, to start with the first mm -hmm. point, uh, uh, the, the first place I, I went um, in the ethnopoetic quest, mm -hmm. you know, it was the library. You know, so you said, you know, fire in the library. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't know whether if it's a quotation mm -hmm. or, uh, um, you know, I think of uh, the American poet Ezra Pound uh, speaking about you know, holding a book in the hand uh, like a globe of fire. Mm -hmm. a book is a globe of fire. In, in the hand, so uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, uh, uh, for, for all of my championing of uh, you know of oral poetry, I'm a, I'm a book person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I uh, 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 unlike the Italian futurist, I don't want to burn the libraries down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to get certain books into them that you know aren't always there. But I don't, just, I don't want to burn them. I want to use them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I prize them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> But uh, but at a at a later point, uh, with the uh, particularly the encouragement of the anthropologist uh, Stanley Diamond, uh, to whom I was uh, uh, I was led by the poet Gary Snyder, uh, I went uh, uh, with Diane Rothenberg uh, to uh, uh, to live. Uh, as it turned out, finally, uh, you know, a couple of years with the uh, the Seneca Indians in Western uh, New York. And, mm. Um, mm. Uh, and uh, that uh, you know that made a difference, but but the work of technicians of the sacred you know was uh, was the, that was the fire in the library. Oh, was it really? Work. I didn't uh, realize that. I yeah, didn't to, realize to a large that. degree. At the very end, I was able to incorporate you know some material from the, 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 at first hand mm -hmm. uh, in a kind of you know rough, rough and ready way. Uh, you know, in the second anthology uh, uh, of, of American traditional American Indian poetries. Uh, shaking the pumpkin, there, there was much more of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, in, in different ways, it's uh, it's informed by uh, you know my own uh, work, uh, that, you know, things that I, you know, both wrote about, and I, I'm sure just you know, the being there, uh, you know, it changes the way you sense yourself in in, 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 in the world as uh, um, you know being traveling to other places, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know. So I like that. Uh, I, I, I like the. Uh, the possibility of moving around, you know, whether under library circumstances or, you know, by other will forms you, will of Will you travel us to a, to a shooter's? Uh, uh, I'm being very greedy here. I can't help it. <laughs> well, I want to do a, a, a shooter's uh, sound poem and um, uh, the there, there are two Schwitter sound poems that that I do very well. Uh, one is shorter, one is longer. <laughs> the, the, Diane has a great preference for my doing the, the, the shorter. <laughs> so, uh, I think I can do a, a duet on the longer one with with Michael McClure. Doesn't mm -hmm. happen to be here now. Uh, I, I, fortunately, this book has a uh, uh, has, has an index and. Uh, so this is a poem that uh, that um, Schwitters was um, uh, was a master collagist, and he was one of the first to understand that collage was a, was a a possibility for uh, uh, for writing for for poetry as uh, as well as for uh, for painting and uh, and physical uh, and environments, the the Merz but, uh, Well, the Merz yeah. takes over uh, uh, that this uh, uh, construction that he does first in his house in. Um, Hanover in Germany, and then when he has to run away to uh, to Norway in his house in uh, in Oslo, and then trying it again when he has to run to uh, uh, to, to England uh, out in the countryside uh, there. But um, uh, you know, and uh, I think I think like uh, George, the uh, uh, you know his um, uh, his love was for uh, for, for small discarded uh, mm -hmm. things, but you know, I, I mean, maybe smaller. And lighter things than uh, you know than what you use, but uh, you know, and he had a sense that uh, you know that there was a kind of uh, you know the, the democratization that was at stake there too. Uh, you know, to uh, you know to, to the, the, uh, the, the democratization of, of materials that was uh, that was going on uh, in the um, uh, in, in the work. 
Uh, so although, although he was not the, the, the most political, overtly political of uh, uh, German poets or artists, uh, you know, he was forced to, to leave uh, uh, Germany. And when he got to England, uh, and this is in, in the middle of the, uh, of the Second World War, uh, the, the British threw him into, uh, into prison for a year because he was a German, uh, you know, even though he was escaping from, uh, you know, from the German fascists. Uh, and, uh, you know, but he said, uh, uh, you know, it, it wasn't bad because they gave him a place to sleep and they gave him food and clothing, uh, you know, and there was lots of garbage around, so he, he continued to do his art, uh, you know, and, uh, and he did, but he gave, for that period of time, uh, he gave up the German language. Uh, and uh, you know, began to speak and write in uh, in English uh, and uh, and in, and in kind of Schwitterese. So this is not a translation. This is uh, you know Schwitter's doing uh, an, uh, an English poem uh, that he calls London Onion, and the subtitles uh, variations about the theme of the Thames Valley. And I will uh, <coughs> perform it standing up. Do you need room? <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> London Onion, variations about the theme of the Thames Valley. London, L-O-N-D-O-N, L-L-O, L-O-N, L-O-N-N, 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 D-O-N, O-N, N, N-N, L-O-N, D-O-N, N-O-L, N-O-D, O-L, O-D, O-L, O-D, Ra, O-D, Ra. O-L, Takalami, Ra, London, Ra. Onion, opinion, segode. Onion, opinion, segode da. Onion, opinion, segode da to, segode da ta. Onion, opinion, segode da tu, segode da tau. To ta, tu ta, to ta, tu ta, segode da tu ta. Brrrr, to ta gr. Dear, you uncle, a grip, to the grip, to the grip, messens, to the grip, messens, to the grip, tear, to the grip, tear, messens, to the grip, tear, messens, to the grip, uncle, to the grip, uncle, a grip, brrrr. How? Item, king, C, Charlie, D, dog, L, love, L, London, love, London, I love, dog, Charlie, I, dog, dog, love, I, dog, love, London, Charlie, onion, opinion, L, O, N, D, N, N, 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 D, O, N, D, O, N, O, N, N, Brrrr. What is your verdict? Verdict A. Verdict B. Verdict A. Verdict B. L. Oh, my sweetest toots, I don't care two hoots when I clap and clap my trap on your trap. L-O-N-D-O-N, segodeda, segodeda, segodeda. Just in the middle of her knee, there I observed the fact that she possessed a little reddish mole. It was alone, just one and sole. And even if there had maybe been two which were just on her knee, just in the middle would be one. In fact, it does. A fact that I would beg you to discuss. B L R A N B B A B A R B A R R B A R R B A R R B A R R L O N N L O N N L O N N L O N N D O N R A N Baran London Is that the long one or the short one? <laughs> well, that's the short one. <laughs> and that's got words in it. The long one doesn't have words. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But then he does a lot of things with words uh -huh. also. Uh, oh. It's oh, it's just exhilarating. Things, so. <laughs> and have you, you, have you performed this a lot? Is this a well, that, that one I performed. Oh, God. <laughs> That's why I occasionally look, look, I look up from the book. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, moved, it's moved into the... Uh, oh, yeah. Suddenly the title of one of his constructions, uh, The Cathedral of Erotic Misery, makes sense to me now. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How so? How so? Well, the Cathedral of Erotic Misery, there are so many inherent contradictions mm -hmm. in those words next to each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just even the, in the performance itself, as well as the words and all the dramatic uh, texture to the sounds, uh, makes those juxtapositions really 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Cathedral of Erotic Misery mm -hmm. was the name that he gave to uh, what the you were calling the, Mer you know, the first Merit's yeah. Bow, mm -hmm. or at least the interior part of it, which is the, uh, 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 you know, the, the most assemblage-looking mm -hmm. part, that the, the, the part that disappeared uh, into, the, uh, into the middle of it. You know, then as it, it built up, it became you know, much more geometric and uh, you know, white and clean, but, you know, at the center. Uh, you know, was uh, was the cathedral of uh, erotic. I wonder, do, do the do the young do the young architects here do they know? But do you know about the Merzbaus? Do you know? Uh, uh, yes, yes, no, no. 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 Might be. In, I mean, it's, it suddenly strikes me that it's in the middle of this. It might be interesting to, to to describe it because it's a fascinating physical construction of space right. that 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 would be really wonderful reference to 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 to. Starting with just the word Merz might be the. Uh, Why don't you start? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, okay. I'll, 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 okay. I'll, I'll, I mean, I did, I did a book out of that. Okay. You know, <laughs> uh, start with the word uh, Mertz. Uh, uh, I mean, Schwitters was, was one of those, you know, that, 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 that discovered that, uh, you know, along with, uh, with paint, which he never really left, uh, you know, there were other materials and tools at his disposal. Uh, you know, so he was, uh, uh, the, the Cubists had come before him and they had started cutting up and pasting. Uh, you know, and the, the pasting was uh, was collage from the French word, uh, you know, collé to paste. Uh, uh, you know, but as a later artist, uh, you know, uh, uh, Max Ernst said, it's, you know, it's it's not the coal that makes the collage, not the paste that makes the collage anymore. Than the, the plume that makes the plumage of uh, of the mm. uh, you know of the uh, of the bird. You know, uh, you know, and collage extends into. Uh, uh, in, into other areas. Uh, so I, I think it was very much with the notion that he was going to be primarily a collagist. Uh, you know, that he looks around for, for a name to give himself and to give, uh, uh, to give his movement. Uh, you know, and he's already, a, 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 you know, maybe there's a, a new fashion in names that's been introduced by the Dadaists, you know, who give themselves a silly name, uh, you know, uh, a nonsense name, Dada, uh, you know, rather than a serious name like Acmeism or Suprematism or, uh, uh, you know, something like so they you know, they're da da, and uh, you know, and, and he uh, uh, you know, presumably looks at one of the collages that he's done, you know, cutting up uh, previously printed sheets of paper, uh, you know, and one of them from uh, the, the common uh, German word for a commercial bank, Commerzbank, and uh, you know, he cuts out the uh, you know the. Uh, the word Merz, which which may have some other meanings in uh, you know in, in German, uh, you know, but uh, I said you know from now on uh, you know my work won't be uh, art, it won't be Dada, it'll be Merz, and this is the beginning of Merz, and anybody who wants to take it you know from me is free to take it from me and change it in any way that they want to uh, uh, to change it. So uh, uh, he puts out a magazine called uh, uh, called Merz, and that's uh, you know part of the uh, you know already the tradition. Uh, you know, of um, uh, self-published, uh, artist-published, uh, you know, magazines, uh, you know, of the kind that, you know, that we've been uh, uh, speaking about. Uh, you know, another another great tradition of publication that you should That's you, right. you go out and publish your own work. You know, not uh, not turn everything into the hands of uh, uh, you know of uh, commercial fiends. Uh. And the and the physical environments, the physical the physical spaces that he filled with the. Uh, what, what do you think? The, the Mertz House. The Mertz House. Is yeah. The, the Mertz yeah. House. Is yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was just carrying it further. Uh, uh, he just he just pushed it. Uh, yeah, he, uh, the, his house and, became, uh, yeah. uh, you know, the interior of the house became a work of art. You know, and you know, in, in that sense, uh, you know, the, the beginning of a, a kind of art that later will be called, you know, environment that later will be called installation. Uh, you know, so you know, Schwitters mm -hmm. is uh, is doing that. Uh, you know, but um, uh, interestingly, again, it's uh, it, it's it's not. Um, it doesn't appear to be, uh, in any sense, uh, you know, in spite of the merits, the, the commerce has been cut <laughs> apart, and only the merits, you know, emerges from that. It's it's, it's his own house, uh, you know, that he's working into. That's his his grand work, you know, is within it was it within those confines. It's not movable. You know, it becomes very large. And, you know, he has to break through a ceiling, you know, to let it keep, uh, you know, let it keep rising, uh, you know, and then in. Uh, uh, then it disappears. It, uh, the, both of, uh, the, the war comes, and uh, you know both the uh, the Mertzbau uh, in um, uh, 
uh, Hanover and the Mertzbau in Norway are, are, are destroyed, you know, and then at the end of his life, because, you know, death comes uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 the Mertzbau in Ambleside in the uh, British countryside, uh, you know, is never completed. So, the, you know, there is no, uh, there is no Mertz, there is the memory of, uh, you know, of, of, of something that was done at, uh, uh, at that time. You know, there are a few photographs, uh, you know, and uh, you know, presumably they don't give us a very clear idea. But uh, th there have been attempts to, on the basis of the photographs, to construct something, uh, you know, like the uh, the Meritzbau and um, uh, uh, the great uh, Schwitter's exposition in uh, uh, in Paris two years ago. Uh, there was uh, you know, such a, a recreation. Such a recreation, recreation yeah. yeah, yeah. It 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 for some reason I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting together. The, the whole idea of Schwitters and the Merzbells and all the references to jazz that you were making earlier. I mean, in the sense, this the idea of the self-publication, the idea of of, the, of 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 the process of creation being much uh, um, more uh, quickened. Uh, um. Well, I don't know about Kurt and his saxophone playing, but he, he uh -huh. did. Uh, branch off into those sound poems very much mm. what we call scat singing mm, mm, and mm. that uh, in you know in the theater piece that I mentioned the 20th century there's there's some, I continue it, it bleeds into other theater pieces but it's called the structure of glossolalia which is speaking in tongues so there's a, a wonderful and that it I think it runs through here uh, in, in the forerunners this idea that you don't always have to know what I'm talking about. Mm. And that, again, to quote from sometimes, somewhere sometimes in here, uh, well then we're on equal ground. If I don't know what I'm talking about and you don't know what I'm talking about, then we can have a dialogue. So, so, you know so my, my notes, <laughs> it, it's theory and, it's in, it's, uh, and I practice it. Others repeat truths which become false by the mere act of repetition. This is in this book Others here. become, be, no, one more time. Others repeat, repeat truths, truths which become false by means of repetition. By the, the mere, mere act, act of, of repetition. repetition. Man, I had stuff like pounded into me as a kid, and I just, you know, it was the ice cream. Give me a headache. I went 180 degrees in the other direction. Now, you see, I love the phrase intellectual property. You know, it's like some real estate development in Southern California. Like, who owns what? I've never had anything copyrighted. I thought it just meant copy it right. <laughs> so you call it quotes. And when I want to quote Robert Duncan, when we show slides, I don't know when you want to do that, you'll see a piece of mine that I did for Wallace Berman called the Berman piece. And in it, there's a little quote of Duncan's where he says that poetry is the agency of imagination, not the other way around. And I, I hope I quoted him correctly. That's, that's the gist of it. Now, along with Robert Duncan, you get Jess, who's an incredible, I'd say the greatest collage artist since Schwitters, for my taste, anyway. Um, and Jess puts out a list of the seven deadly virtues of contemporary art. This is about 20 years old. I mean, the piece of paper is easily 20 years old. And I'll just list these according to Jest, the Gospel, the seven deadly virtues. Originality, spontaneity, <laughs> simplicity, intensity, immediacy, impenetrability, shock. <laughs> And I have to plead guilty to all seven of those in my work, man. So, so anyway, I'm trying to think what other quotes come out of this book. There are great ones. Uh, I, I would love to, I have a Wallace Berman's son, Tosh. I published after his father died something called The Nature of Poetry that I'd like to read later tonight. I'm trying to think. Uh, it, Mallarmé is in here. And I read one of Mallarmé's poems called The Windows. 
every day for a month, and every day I got a different ride uh, from it. That's read, that's the joy. Um, yeah, possibly, possibly. No, come on. Possibly. I, I, but it, <laughs> Kenneth Patchen, the marriage of David Mountsir and Tina, who we spoke of, was a Kenneth Patchen poem in San Francisco called What is the Beautiful? And it has a refrain that goes, pause and begin again. Uh, Diane de Prima. These are just jump in anywhere you want, Jerry. These are just these are these are, these are the things that Jerry's book got me off on, uh, on on the things. This is a Diane de Prima that I heard her read somewhere around here. It's not that far from here, Crossroads School recently. It's called Rant, and it has a refrain in it: "The only war that matters is the war against the imagination," and she repeats that over and over. The only war that matters is the war against imagination. All other wars are subsumed in it. And somewhere mm -hmm. she says you can't be a conscientious objector in this war. Uh, okay, th those are, do you want me to read the yes. Tosh Berman, na yes. The Nature of Poetry? Yes. Yes. Because this comes out, you know, Mina Loy, where the, the Daily News is printed in blood on the wings of butterflies. Uh, mm -hmm. Poetry to me, is what the, the um, they've always asked me as a visual artist, why am I interested in poetry? What's, and I tell them, in the last century, people used to go for the waters, which meant they went somewhere to be revived. And, you know, it's like, a, 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 what is it now, the Betty Ford, you know, Lacoste or something. I mean, it's like that, where you went and you, you became rejuvenated. You got your battery recharged. Well, that's what poetry has been for me and continues to be. It's the place I go to get my battery charge. The other battery charger is jazz. I went every uh, a year ago in, when the beat show starting in New York, I went every Monday night to the Knitting Factory and heard David Murray's big band, mm. which is like 17 cats playing avant-garde jazz. And that just blew me away. Is this is in mean, a little every, tiny room? Uh, no, it's not that little. Know, it's, you know, a room like this. Yeah. And it's still going on every Monday night. And then I would call, I would get home, and because of the time difference, I would catch David Meltzer and, and you know, rattle his ear every time. Um, so this is uh, f printed on my little hand press, which is a letter press that I'm still working on, still printing. See, you can print round books if you have your own little hand press, you know? Um, so this is a, a love press summer shot, and that's what I call my little hand press, the love press. It's like an old uh, wrestling term. Uh, love press summer shot, 1982. The nature of poetry. The nature of poetry is under the skin, the rug, the deep blue sea, the big rock in the deep blue sea, the father's grave by the big rock in the deep blue sea. The cinema screen that shows the father's grave by the big rock in the deep blue sea. The look of guiding angels watching the cinema screen that shows the father's grave by the big rock in the deep blue sea. This secret that is ours, we share sweat, meat, and heat. <coughs> it is the nature of poetry. Tosh Berman. Oh. Beauty, huh? wow. What a transport. I'm telling you, those Ooh, poets are oh. motherfuckers. <laughs> let's, 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 de let's devolve into poetry. So, seedings. Yeah, this is from the new, new book called The Seedings. Uh, and and, and the, the title poem, which is longer than I guess I shouldn't uh, do, is, is all for poets. It's, it's dedicated to Robert Duncan. Uh, because it uh, comes out of a, a, a dream that I had after, uh, after his death. Uh, in, uh, uh, in which I'm uh, uh, reading uh, a poem called Seedings. But, uh, you can read it. 
You could read them down. Well, I'll, I'll, instead, <laughs> I'll read a, a, a short poem, okay. and then I'll, I'll read a, a, another poem about poetry. Uh, you know, the, uh, the short poem is, is utopian. <laughs> this is a, a utopian poem uh, called a, a Paradise of Poets in three short parts. One, he takes a book down from his shelf and scribbles across a page of text. I am the final one. This means the world will end when he does. Two, in the inferno, Dante conceives a paradise of poets and names it limbo. Foolishly, he thinks his place is elsewhere. Three, now the time has come to write a poem about a paradise of poets. And then I'll, I'll read one that's um, not as direct. Mm, mm, mm. It's not a sound poem. <laughs> 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 it's called the uh, prologue or prolegomena uh, to a poetics, and it's uh, dedicated to Michael McClure, the playwright. Poet man walks between dreams. He is alive, he is breathing freely through a soft tube like a hookah. Ashes fall around him as he walks, singing above them. Oh, how green the sun is where it marks the ocean. Feathers drift atop the hills down which the poet man keeps walking, walking, a step ahead of what he fears, of what he loves. Why has the poet failed us? Why have we waited, waited for the, word, for the word to come again? Why did we remember what the name means only to now forget it? If the poet's name is God, how dark the day is, how heavy the burden is he carries with him. All poets are Jews, said Svetayeva. The God of the poets is Jewish, said a Jew. It was white around him, and his voice was heavy, like a poet's voice in winter, old and heavy, crackling, remembering frozen oceans in a summer climb, how contrary he felt, how harsh the suffering was in him. Let it go. The poet is dreaming about a poet and calls out. Soon he will have forgotten who he is. Speak to the poet's mother. She is dead now. So many years ago, she left her father's climb, his father, too. The tale of wandering is still untold, untrue. The tale of who you are, the tale of where the poem can take us, of where it stops and where the voice stops. The poem is an argument with death. The poem is priceless. Those who are brought into the poem can never leave it. In a silver tux, the poet in the poem by Lorca walks down the hall to greet the poet's bride. The, poets see, the poet sees her breasts shine in the mirror. Apples as white as boobs, says Lorca. He has fed the milk of paradise, the dream of every poet man, of every poet bride. The band plays up, the day unstops and rushes out to greet another night. Is the black poet black, and is the creation of his hands and throat a black creation? Yes, says the poet man who wears three rings. The poet man who seeks the precious light passes the day beside a broken door no one can enter. Hold it shut, the god cries, and the Jew rolls over in his endless sleep. Gods like little wheels glide past him down the mountain road where cats live in a cemetery guarded by his father's star. A poet and a bride entangled in the grass. His hands are black, his eyes the whitest white and rimmed with scarlet. Hear the drumbeat, heart. The blacks have landed on the western shore. The long lost past of poetry revives. Our fingers fail us, then tear them off, the poet cries, not for the first time.
The dead are too often seen filling our streets. Who hasn't seen them? A tremor across the lower body, always the image of a horse's head and sand flies, a woman's breast and honey, she in whose mouth the murderers stopped gravel, stuffed gravel, who will no longer speak. The poet is the only witness to that death, writes every line as though the only witness. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we haven't seen. I know. I am. You want to see some slides? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You see some slides. I yeah. don't know what we do about the lights. Do we? We'll hit the lights. We we'll hit them. Yeah. Hit the lights. <laughs> I'll hit the lights. You hit the lights. Sure. Actually, I'm not even. Hit the light the chair thing. Yeah. You so don't want to be. Oh, yeah, let me move my chair over. Wait. Okay. Oh, that's this. Something that's a little. Oh. This is 1961, and this traveled with the, the Beat show. I'm not getting any focusing on the, the thing when I do it. Um, on the buttons, nothing, nothing's happening. Um, there you go, thank you. Is that better? Uh, yes, that's better. And so what it is, uh, in Larkspur, Northern California, I would go out every dawn to the dump, play a bamboo flute, watch the sun come up, and then gather my raw materials for the day's sculpting. And uh, one day, standing in front of the Larkspur meat market, I thought, I wonder if I could make a meat market uh, like, like a realist painter would. And so the, all the meat market signs were on the dump one day. And on the left, we have the butcher and the meat eater, the market basket, the meat market proper, with some 78 records on the bottom. That's called bottom round steak. There's a skirt steak up on the shelf, a boneless hot dog. Uh, salt pork on the little red spool, uh, and the character on the right is called Chuck Steak. And this piece traveled uh, with the Beat Culture Show 1950 to 1965 and is now being purchased by the De Young Museum, so you'll be able to see it in San Francisco. What, where's the scale of this? Uh, the mannequin is the life size mannequin, oh. <coughs> so it's about 18 feet across. <laughs> And uh, it's uh, had a, a similar piece called The Librarian. There was a bunch of books nailed together that traveled with it. There was a portrait of the librarian in Larkspur. So that's 1960, 61. This is when the Art of Assemblage comes out. Uh, and this slide is in backwards, but I think we'll look at it this way anyway. Uh, it's called Scientific American, and it's only about 18 inches high. And the candles are the candles on my father's 70th birthday cake, which was quite a blaze. Uh, and this tells a little story, uh, because at this time, this is 1972 in Topanga Canyon, I'm a PTA president at my kid's school, and the uh, candles on the left that go up to the top, that's all the years you get for childhood. You get all the rest of those to be a grown-up. And there were some people, you know, letting their kids smoke pot at that time, which I totally was opposed to. I thought I should be doing all the pot smoking. 
And William Blake had the songs of innocence and the songs of experience. And you sing with a different voice after life's decked you a few times when you make a joyful noise. Uh, so that's a, a little kind of a, a story that goes with this. But the thing with the visual arts, and this is a, again in translation, whether you know that story I've told you or not, this piece has to make it on formal terms. It has to stand on a wall next to the greatest Piero della Francesca painting ever painted. Uh, you don't get any special consideration just because you're using found objects. And this is called a Berman piece. This is 1986. And Wallace Berman's been dead for 10 years. And I finally came to grips with the, that loss and found a desk that uh, was being thrown away, turned it on its side. So it's composed of a lot of little elements, nothing that's not his hat, that's not his shoes. There is a picture of him uh, that I took that was used as an announcement. And the quote from Robert Duncan is a white piece of paper on the side. What is the quote? That poetry is the agency of imagination. It's not the other way around. And the, the 50 gallon drum is something that if we were driving around, you know, and I saw it, Wallace would have stopped and let me pick it up and throw it in the car. And the way the piece was built was uh, I would just kind of wander around my studio, and if I found something and uh, decided to put it on the Berman piece, if lightning didn't strike me dead, I put it on the Berman piece. So it was called Peace as in War and Peace. Because I was desirous that history is known for the Crimean War, this war, that war. What if we started naming history according to peace eras? And that the era that we have lived in is named for my friend Wallace, and it would be known as the Berman Peace. And let me, can I go back for it? Let me, can I ask you a question? Yes. I'm real, I'm real fascinated by what you said in the, when you're talking about the peace with your father's cans, the candles, yeah. about how. That, that, you, that, that for you it has to stand up against any Piero della Francesca. That's right. How do you, do you, do you, do you come to a feeling of that in the work yourself Absolutely. before you finish it? I, I don't put the L-O-V-E, which is in the, on the, in the four corners, it's mm -hmm. backwards here, the O is on the left side, mm -hmm. and that's my sign, because I, I started out making gifts of love for someone's birthday or their wedding, or it would be a poetry reading, and I found that I was writing, you know, shelf paper, 25 foot long rolls with no punctuation in the 50s, and no place to breathe, and I had stage fright, and I would go to the Burmans to read with the uh, poem of David's that had been sent in the mail, and I had heart palpitations. Then I found that I could go to a place like the Sixth Gallery in San Francisco and take a box with a tin type and an old rusty can and a section of these 25 foot long poems, uh, and I could sit there and enjoy the evening without the stage fright. And that's the birth of a plastic artist mm -hmm. at that moment. So these were gifts of love, and I uh, put that L-O-V-E on all of them, and that means that it's ready to go out into the world. Okay, okay that's my... Uh, okay. And I, I don't allow anything to go on. I, have, I start something every day, and so I have this incredible warehouse of unfinished work. Uh, I never give up or admit defeat. You know, I just, <laughs> give me some more time and I can, I can turn this thing around. It's alchemically making something fine out of, you know, shit that people are throwing away. That's the Berman piece. And this now is at the Walker Museum in, in, uh, in Minneapolis. So they own that, and you can go see it there. We're in Minneapolis. And then this is outdoor sculpture. This is an attempt to choreograph uh, found objects. I went to Rome on a Frida Rome in 82, 83 to study public art, because my work uses things that are decaying and, and been thrown away, and I bring them inside. They'll last forever. You take them back outside, and they'll just disintegrate into powder. So. Uh, I did a clock tower in MacArthur Park that's still there. Beverly Hills wanted me to do something. Uh, I didn't want to do another clock tower or a, and always be the guy that did clock towers. So I uh, didn't want to do a sundial. That, everybody does sundials. So I did a, something called a moon dial. So this is the moon dial. 
that I put into Beverly Hills and they, and they just shit their pants. And they, it was only a loan for 18 months, two years or something like that. And they wanted to run it out of town. Um, <laughs> How, how long did it last? I, it was like a, 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 the, the city council, yeah, the city council, they had all these meetings and, uh, you know, they signed a petition and, and you know, they wanted to paint them and, and <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the platinum, if it had been platinum, they'd have kept it, you know what I mean? Because this is a town of facelifts and here they're showing how beautiful age is, you know? And, so, and it's aimed at the path of the moon and, you know what I mean? It had, and, and it matches the magnolia leaves on the ground. There's a coral tree on the corner there that matches the red, and it's just choreographed beautifully for that space. And it was celebrating the 75th anniversary of Beverly Hills, which is the, you know, to me. I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. You know, Man Ray and Juliet had a double wedding with Max Ernst and Dorothea Tanning in Beverly Hills. You know, and Stravinsky lived there. You know, and Schoenberg and. Uh, you, you used to have the best bookstores. You would go there to Beverly Hills to get to, to get good books. So I was selling, writing that cultural side. Well, they didn't buy that at all. Uh, but then uh, it was fought, and finally at a city council meeting, they came to grips that they had a moral commitment to me, and they were going to abide by it. And uh, I did get hit by graffiti. Uh, upper middle class white gangs. You can, <laughs> you can tell because it was all legible. You can read them. So, but then, yeah, so then a, a year later, I get a phone call and they're going to do the first Beverly Hills Follies. And could they use my moon dial? Because it was one of the funniest things that happened during the year. You know? And I said, great, but I want to go to the Follies. So I go to the Beverly Hills Hotel. And uh, they, they use this as uh, their announcement. The city council members are in each of the spheres. The boys, there's a picture of them. Jay Leno is the master of ceremonies. And on every table, there's a floral arrangement in the shape of the moon dial. <laughs> They're spray painted gold. <laughs> styrofoam ball. And so then I'm looking at the program and it says, the art kook. And I said, oh, fuck, here we go again, man. But the art kook was the woman that went around with a petition to everybody, and she showed a, a catalog page of mine. I don't know if I brought the catalog. But in 1957, I found a flattened cat in Berkeley Street, and I made a little thing. It only exists as a photograph anymore. I didn't run over the cat. I found it. But she, she would go to the, your door in Beverly Hills and show you this and say, this is what's coming next. You know, if, if we let this guy keep the moon dial up. And everybody signed you know, right away. Well, one woman at the city council meeting came like at 11 o'clock at night and told this story of how the whole petition was done on fall false advertising that the city money was paid for. That's not true. They didn't buy it. It was a loan. So anyway, it's, it, it, uh, when I see the art kook, it's this woman with the petition. And she comes out and she sings, oh, you got to have art, miles and miles of art, even if it is a little cruddy. And at this point, the, uh, no, that's what the city council came in and sang. First of all, the woman with the petition is screaming balls. Balls. We know what he's trying to say, you know. And, the, and the, Beverly Hills, the Beverly Hills cops come and drag her off the stage. That's when the city council comes in with their top pads and their canes, and they do this musical number. And I'm thinking, what a great country, man! A year after confrontation, it becomes a musical comedy. <laughs> we just we just postponed World War III. And, and then if every politician has to take a cream pie in the face once a year, too, you know? I, I, was, I had such high hopes and, and that it would be the, like the Eiffel Tower, you know what I mean, for Beverly Hills. Well, on the day, of the, at the end of the 18 months comes a certified letter and they're going to charge me for every second that it's still over park. The best line of it was some city employee went by. This was at the end of Beverly Boulevard, where it hit Santa Monica Boulevard. It's a perfect, because in Rome, where I study public art, the ev end of every street, there's something far out going on, really beautiful. And so that's what I did for Beverly Hills. Well, some Beverly Hills guy is, like, works for the city. He's driving by, he phones up, he says, I think there's been a wreck. You want me to clean it up? <laughs> that's the moon dog. Oh, boy. So, so where is it now? Well, where is it now? Well, see, then I, was, I stored it. Two of the boys are in Ann Jans' backyard. And the others were at UCLA's uh, graduate building, because I was teaching at UCLA. And now they're on the horn, like, like you know, get rid of them, because they're, they're you know, taking space from the UCLA graduate students' work yard. 
And so it's just been moved to Bergamot Station and just in storage. And who knows where the where it'll rise again? You know, the, the moon dial will rise again. We just don't know where it went. <laughs> So then this is the next one down at City Court Plaza, 7th and Figueroa, uh, <coughs> um, and it was a collaboration between a poet and a sculptor, which I thought was an interesting thing. So they paired up poets and sculptors. I was paired up with Charles Simic. And so Charles comes to town, and we walked around. The only thing I liked were the revolving doors that went into the building, and he didn't know why you couldn't have where it says there's a... Uh, if you have a pacemaker, be careful if there's a microwave or something, but these little signs that are around the public, why couldn't they be poems? And so I made the doorways, the revolving doorway, and he wrote eight poems. So you can't walk through the doorways, each one of them, and these are my first bronzes I did, they're of a, uh, a poet's poems. Uh, so they're, they're beautiful poems, all relating to doors and doorways. And you can't walk through them, but there are poems there, and it's my experience that with poetry, you can go anywhere. So this is called Portals to Poetry, and that's at 7th and Figueroa. Like the rich cousin of the other one. And this slide is backwards too, but that just shows you some of the poems, and it shows you what a terrible slide person I am. And the rusty boy at the top. It's actually really nice to see it up closer. And then this is in uh, 1992, I did a series that uh, celebrated various uh, jazz musicians and poets and photographers, and this was on the right, it's for uh, Artie Richer, this is a drugstore for Artie, he's one of the original Ferris Gallery painters that had a lot of trouble with pain and uh, uh, took a lot of drugs for that reason, and I always wanted to give Artie a drugstore. And I had these shelving units that came from a little town in Orange County called Tustin, from the Tustin Drugstore. So I finally did this piece for Artie, which is again uh, just a big assemblage uh, collection of, of items. And this is in a uh, uh, Barnsdale Park during a retrospective in 1992. And this is just showing it up, up close. The, Yeah, th this one I is, uh, it's a salute, you know, to an artist. And then this is just a, a fairly recent piece called uh, Gorgeous Follies. It's about, it's about three or four feet high. And where did the title come from? How, why is it called Georgia's Follies? Well, because I've always done these things that are known as Georgia's Follies. Uh -huh. And then this is the one I always end. These are usually three-hour slide lectures with, with 360 slides. Uh, you're getting off easy tonight. Um, and that's my little boy, Errol. And this is in someone's backyard because the public art thing got out of hand. And so I now do these things. I've got one that's going into a friend's home. And this is the photographer, Charles Britton, his home in Santa Monica Canyon. It's called the Enigma Sphere. Because Charles Britton, once they, they, he, they quoted him as saying, when I came on the scene in 1957, I was a complete enigma. And I've always been thankful that I was not an incomplete enigma. So this is for Charles and Barbara called the Enigma Sphere, and I would always end with a quote from uh, the children in art, that's what life is for. That's my little boy, Aaron. Okay, that's it. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah. Don't. your own presses. You still have yours. Mm -hmm. Jerry, in a, a strange way, has extended his into the global vista. Mm -hmm. But in those days of self-publishing, mm -hmm. which uh, you started earlier than he did. Um, did I start earlier? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I, I don't think there was much difference than self-publishing today except for the technology. But there was a reason why you did it. Wasn't 
couldn't get, I couldn't get published any other way. <laughs> yeah. and, and George, very, very directly. George, yeah. um, you know, I lecture about you a lot, especially the 33 Palm poems, because it's my, one of my favorite books of all time. Um, your extension into uh, the print world, mm -hmm. because you are a verbal artist, even though you are also a visual artist, mm -hmm. uh, seem to be a logical way of uh, bridging that interest of poetry and all those people you were with right. and the visual too because they became ex and they were performance pieces as well a lot of them right yeah yeah they can be yeah they definitely can be yeah and, and you too yeah do you see right now i'm thinking i really you, think performance is the bridge yeah. hmm. you know i think dick's intermedia really uh, was vital to you whether you knew the term or not, mm -hmm. because I think what we're experiencing now, 35 years later, mm -hmm. is in fact a renaissance of intermedia mm -hmm. without the consciousness. Mm -hmm. You don't have to con raise the consciousness anymore because I think people know that your interest in jazz and your interest in ethnopoetics is no different than what, what was happening uh, what's happening today. Yeah, but, but you're pulling the two things together. Yeah. You know, the the, the, the self-publication per, right. you know, and, and the and performance. Because I really think, that I, I, I really think Moira and I really have to get together because I think there is a bridge there. I think Yeah, go ahead. I mean, think about that. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the publication, you know, for, for, first of all, was a practical matter. I mean, that, uh, it was the distribution. You, you wanted to, uh, uh, you know, to, to get it out. That, that, now, that's a kind of performance too. That, that it, it was work, you know, that you felt was directed towards uh, you know, somebody. It, uh, uh, you know, it may have had its. Uh, it, uh, it, it certainly did have its, uh, its, its its meditative side that you were, uh, you know, using poetry towards, uh, you know, personal self discovery or world discovery or, or you know, but. Uh, um, it was uh, a sense of, of, of disempowerment, of lack of power, you know, by not being able to, uh, to bring the work out, uh, you know, became in, in, intense. And, you know, and the notion of having to wait around, uh, you know, for some objective outside uh, institution, press, or whatever, uh, you know, before the work could be made public was, uh, you know, it was unbearable. And I'm not going to wait one year, two years, mm -hmm. then they'll finally find another book will come out. And, uh, uh, you know, and then suddenly we realized, uh, 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 you know, we can, uh, you know, we can make it happen. Uh, you know, and in fact, if we made it happen, there were those out there, you know, to read it, you know, and ample enough, uh, you know, the people that in some sense we wanted to read it were, you know, were there to read it. There was also a, a, a circumstance for, for, for many of us, uh, you know, who came poor into the world, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to do it because it, it, it was an American moment, uh, you know, where, you know, one thing we could do was, uh, uh, you know, because we're still in the post-war, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, economically, uh, you know, the American dollar has so much power in the world uh, you know that you can send out as uh, you know as we did to Gibraltar, you know, or Barcelona, uh, you know, or uh, Taiwan, or um, uh, you know Malaysia, or where you know the, or to, you know to have uh, the work printed there, hmm. you know, or take advantage, uh, you know, of, uh, of uh, immediate technologies, uh, you know, mimeograph, ditto, uh, you know, I mean, any any way of. Uh, of, of reproducing, you know, even before we knew that, uh, you know, say Russian constructivist artists before us had done, you know, cheap publication, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, just, you know, to, you know, to get it out in that way, you know, and performance was another way of getting the work out, you know, absent a, uh, uh, um, an institutional, uh, a commercial uh, conduit for, for that work. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, and, and that was a head of, you know, just, you know, when, when you suddenly had a realization that uh, you, you didn't have to wait for uh, the, the 92nd Street Y Poetry Center in New 
New York, you know, to give you a university to give you a reading space, you know, that you could find, uh, you know, uh, small art galleries, you could find coffee shops, you could find bars, uh, you know, and, and, that, that, and that they were very amiable places, uh, you know, to, to read in. I mean, I love reading places where people can eat food. <laughs> well, then, and, and doesn't the creation of the work, I mean, the, the dissemination of the work becomes, as Judith mm -hmm. says, it becomes part of the work in itself. It becomes part of the performance of the work. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, although that's not all the work. I mean, it's, 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 it's not simply show mm -hmm. uh, No, I mean, no, I don't. Time, you know, but, but it uh -huh. is a shared activity, you know. And, it's a uh, gift. You know, it's a gift. When, when one speaks about a paradise of poets, I mean, that's not just people, you know, mm -hmm. who write poetry, you know, but people who engage in, uh, uh, you know, in poetry and what metaphorically poetry represents in, uh, in, in, in uh, you know, in, in people's lives. So, so when, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, imagines, finds, loses, finds again, uh, you, know, uh, you know, various paradises of, uh, of, of, of poets. The, the, this era, the, the Beat show, uh, it's 15 years, 1950 to 1965, and it starts out really with not any idea that there would be that much of an audience. And the thing that everybody is, is, is points out is how we were all each other's audience. We went to the films that the filmmakers, we, we, we heard the poets read, the poets came to our exhibitions, we went to the jazz clubs and heard the musicians play. And, and, and so there was, uh, there, there weren't these watertight compartments, there, the word career was on no one's lips. We were all in just, it, it's, how's the work? I mean, the dialogue, I loved it because the dialogue was, hey man, what's happening? Everything's cool. You didn't have to learn names, man. You know, and no explanations. No one explained anything. It was a beautiful moment. And but what what but what I in, what I see is, is is why did they pick this this 15 year slice? And part of me is this like little Jiminy Cricket conscience that's traveled with the Beat Circus because there was another 15 year period from the end of the Civil War until 1980. That's the only time that all those cattle drives went on. Well, 18, that 1865 to 1880, that 15 year period, all the Western movies are based on that real slice of 15. Now, what a crock of horseshit we've had to live with. From, you know what I mean? The whole, the Reagan years, everything that, you know, settle with a gun, all of that came out of those 15 years. So while I travel with this beat circus to make sure that they don't start a bunch of BS about what went on during those 15 years. In other words, I want to see our icons, the people that we believed in, which is, is so wonderful about this book, that, you're, that, that, the, that the true voices are heard. Who is, who is this, is Roy's quote, that this has, the, the, has true soup and true nuts? Oh, well, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Baraka. All right, so I mean, so, so there's uh, a slice of time there that is different now. But I think that, 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 that we can all be each other's audience. See, there's a, a problem with um, uh, Dennis Hopper being involved with this beat generation and because he's a celebrity is the only reason. Well, I, I, kinda, I don't remember Dennis from any of these years. But finally, I had lunch with him in San Francisco and we started comparing notes. And we were on the exact same set in the audience, both of us very shy young men the night that Cameron read her poetry on Sawtail Boulevard. And he w and, and when the guy that used Cameron to do, Cameron, Cameron is, is a poet visionary uh, on the cover of Semina. She just passed away a few years. I have her entire estate and all her poetry to publish. It's something that I have to do. But uh, there was a guy who used to do Hamlet, a Chinese actor in the Hollywood bus depot. And you do Hamlet in Chinese, it's hysterical. And he worked for Wallace Berman, Semina, Stone Brothers on Sawtell, and Dennis was there that night, and I was there that night. So the reason I don't remember him is that I didn't talk till I was 30. I mean, I listened. <laughs> I mean, all these people were in full stride, man, and I'm just like emulating them, you know? Uh, and I wanted to hear what they had to say. You know, it's hard for you to believe tonight that probably that I was like that ever. But, so, so, so there's, there's, uh, so Dennis is legitimately connected to this thing, not just a celebrity hook thing. So that was nice to find out. 
Now, intellectual property, I have in my note here, I, I have Rip Torn. Rip Torn just got a $400,000 settlement from Dennis Hopper because Dennis said, they asked him, why wasn't Rip Torn an easy rider? And he said, well, he pulled a knife on me. And for saying that on a talk show on television cost him $400,000. So where's your intellectual property? That's what it comes from. <laughs> I mean, wait a second. Wait a second. Did so, I, I didn't say you that. You said something in there that, that, I, that you said. That's but that, you said that was the difference between now and then. What do you see as the difference between now and then? What do you do? You, I well, mean, because I have to get the kids that I teach to go to poetry readings mm -hmm. to, to see something other than the slice of the pie, which is the visual arts, or in your case, architecture, and that they're very small slices of the human pie. And you need to be in touch with professionals of your generation that are, that are going to be the collectors, that are going to be the people mm -hmm. that, that hire you that, to build your structures. And maybe not only that, but, is it, but, but my sense is that there was a real, when you described this time, that there was a real dialogue among the disciplines that you learned as much <laughs> about art making from, from, from seeing Chet Baker as you did from, from, from uh, uh, um, maybe working with Wally or someone else who was, was very, very important. You, do, by the way, do, you, do, do people know about Wally Berman? You had said something earlier about Wally's, the two things that Wally said. I don't know, Wally Berman was a, a very important, here I am in this, very important, but he was, a, he was an artist who, who, would you describe him? You know him so much better than I do, but I have the feeling that there's some references that are passing around that may be going over the heads yeah. of people, and I um, want to ground he, us a little bit. Yeah, all right, he, Wallace Berman, comes out of the inner city of Los Angeles uh, with a strong Jewish background, and he's involved with the underworld uh, of Los Angeles, which you used to be able to know who was in charge. Nobody does anymore, not since Mickey Cohen. That could, you know what to do in this town. Uh, but Wallace was part of a jazz culture. It was pre predominantly black. Um, and after uh, World War II, uh, he began to, uh, he had an exhibition uh, finally in 1957 when a person named Walter Hopps came through and Bob Alexander, who was a printer, and these, these two men, Bob Alexander and Wallace Berman, walked into my life when I was 20 years old, and just that was it. You know, my course was set. I saw Wallace Berman in 1957 take an art gallery on La Cienega, which at that time to me were just like shoe stores. If you wanted a high-heeled shoe, you went to this gallery, you know what I mean? I just, they were commercial galleries. And he turned this commercial gallery into a temple. And I was with him there as he built his things, and he put up his paintings, and he got busted. They took out um, a drawing, which I have now. Uh, there was a, a small little cover of a magazine, and that drawing in 1957 called an, uh, caused an art gallery to be closed, and now it just got through traveling to all the major museums up on the wall. Yeah, what was the, uh, the, Cameron's, the drawing. The drawing. Cameron's drawing. Cameron's uh, drawing, I don't know. She, she uh, did a, a line drawing, and it looks like some creature, uh, you know, screwing another creature, but you don't know, you know what I mean? It's just, a, it's a wild drawing. Um, I'll find it for you if you want, when we get done. I have the complete seminar that, that Berman oh. did. I, I published this because I never had a complete set of them. There were nine of them. It took him 10 years to do, it took me five years just to make a facsimile edition of them because I wanted the same papers that were everywhere in the 50s and now in the 80s I couldn't find them. Uh, so I, I can find that drawing for you. But Berman was the quintessential editor of our times. In other words, he went up to San Francisco during the Beat Phenomenon, was on the street there, and he published all the San Francisco poets. So that as you l run down the list of poets, he's the first one to publish William Burroughs, a small little fragment from uh, Pantapon Rose, it's called. Um, and, and, so, and he would, he would be on the scene where something just started. He would be there that first night that something happened. He had that kind of antenna. And he's known the things you see around the museums are these little pictures of a hand holding a transistor radio. And inside where the transistor radio, there will be an image. And these hands will be either singly, fours, nines, sixteens. And the, the county museum has them up regularly. And so, and he would just, they were like visual poems. The imagery would have, a, a, you know, a Buddhist, uh, a rose, uh, some pornography, a, a swastika, iron cross, a snake, 
I mean, just the, the list of them is, is, is straight out of one of these uh, poems in the book. And what were the and two things that he said that you told us? That art, he used as his logo, art is love is God. That was his logo that he, that's published in his, uh, his magazines. And, this, and I, that was the first thing that I saw that he had printed was his logo, art is love is God. The second thing that I saw that he printed was fuck nationalism, WB. And so I feel that is the one aspect of what's going on as we leave this century, if somehow we can get beyond nationalism, you know what I mean, and on to another thing. I mean, it's a whole other evening. Yeah, no, if we yeah. get, get, get off into the anyway, question of yeah. the, the meaning of nationalism at the end of the year. Right, yeah. I well, wonder, I, you know, I, I wanted to come back to, 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 to come back to the to the end of the century. Now it suddenly strikes yeah. me. I see those seminars, and I, I think about zines. I think about right. I, I yeah. think about how how in a sense that 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 tradition is still going on. Absolutely. That yeah. that 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 the that the young, for instance, that are 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 once are are still publishing each other. Yeah. That that's part of the way that that that. That, that 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 things happen that you share that you that you share energy that you generate an aesthetic that you generate a, a, a vision which is which is 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 like a fly's eye that you can see out of your own eyes and yet you can see larger and bigger and perhaps more ample than than uh, and but and I think that's again one of the reasons that I think it's that that that, that I do these is because as as young architects or as young artists, I think we do. As you're right, we tend to they te we tend to specialize them, and it's very important to be able to see what is the imminence of ideas. Where are the ideas coming from? Where am I thinking of this? You know, of where am I asking myself these questions as an architect or as an artist? And all of a sudden, I find out that these questions are have also being dealt with in poetry or being dealt with in music. That here are these 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 uh, you know the, these these human beings who have been doing this work. For, for 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 you know decades now, and how does their process? How what can I learn from their process? How does their process match up with the kinds of things that I'm thinking about now? And what is the dialogue? How do we how do we enliven in this? Because it, you're really talking also about a, a time and a, and an activity of great power, but it's very it's tiny power. It's intimate power. It's it's about self-publishing. It's about having a vision and making something happen, and then feeling so strongly the need to share this or to give this that, 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 you, that you find a way to, to disseminate it, to put it out there. Yeah. And here 40 or 50 years later, it's, it, it has a strength that's far beyond any one of those, those yeah, tiny little moments. I think at certain points also, mm -hmm. whether then or now, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's having a vision and having a sense of its placement uh, you know, uh, you know, within. Talk to that a little Over bit. against or you know, within mm -hmm. other. You know, Visions. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's 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 visionaries, you know, with a sense of the uh, uh, of the uh, of, of the visionary, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even in the, in the same way that uh, uh, you know George expresses, uh, you know, the sense that you know, for the, when the work goes out into the world, mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, it, it will s sit next to a Piero della Francesca, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, you know, that uh, that the willingness, uh, you know, to put one's work, you know, over against you know the the, the best that the past. Or the present has mm -hmm. to, you know, to offer, you know, to not be thrown, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by that, and to have a sense of, uh, you know, of what it is that w was done before, what it is that's mm -hmm. being done now, uh, you know, to be consumed by that in, uh, in a way, but but not to, not to, uh, not too much humility around yeah. that, uh, you know, a little uh, sense of. Uh, uh, Bringing oneself into that, you know, into that, uh, into that company that mm -hmm. you're part of a, uh, you know, and then this is said again and again, you know, uh, you know, to see yourself as, uh, you know, you know, if one is, a, if, if if you're looking for the visionary, uh, you know, then also to search out the visionary company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I, you know, when, when the first realization, you know, that you know that that, that was going on and was possible for that, you know, to go on, I I, I found it you know, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Shoot without fear. That was something that uh, Wallace Berman used to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, the the first person that painted with oil on canvas did not necessarily do the best painting. You got to remember that. 
Okay, so sometimes uh, a little uh, jazz story of uh, there's a concert and Clifford Brown, the trumpet player, is about to go on. They say, well, what are you going to play? And he says, well, I'm going to play The Man I Love. And they say, oh, you can't do that, man. Mel Jackson just came off the stand and Mel Jackson played The Man I Love. And Clifford very humbly said, well, that was Mel Jackson playing The Man I Love. So we come, uh, there's a phrase, walk with the immortals. You know? I mean, we come with an in, incredible packed house you know, of greats behind us. There are greats in front of us, and we need to celebrate this day, this night. And we are so blessed to be here. I mean, Jerry hasn't punched me once the whole night, right? <laughs> <laughs> Eugenia like gave me a couple shots, you noticed that? <laughs> huh? Did so, I? Yeah. I thought I was being nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, she has a nice touch. Yeah, no, no, we're, I, mean, I was just getting that, so excited this, I had to touch That this conversation, body. <laughs> that this evening is going on right here, is, is, it's unbelievable. You know, this is, is at least 30 times more people than I knew in 1957 that I could talk to. Mm. And you know, you said something earlier uh, when you talked about the art of the art and poetry <laughs> of the century being being that which is a it, great contribution. Yeah, talk when, about when that I, I, the twentieth right? century, when I do this theater piece, <clears throat> I stand up. I think our century is hot. I think we have nothing to hang our. Well, we have some probably but a great music, great art, great literature has been produced. Okay, we fucked up the air, the water, <laughs> our relationships. But that's that bar graph that I was telling you about that we're working on. Now, Buckminster Filler, he's, you know, the first tool was, what are you going to do? You got the water in your hand, so you got to invent a bowl, okay? And so I see civilization like us. We're always like the cartoon characters. We're going off the cliff. We're in midair. We're racing. You know, we're okay until we realize we're off the cliff, and then boom, it's done. So all of our technology brings us these solutions that are, which are worse than the problem that they solved. And so we've always got this technological curve, and Bucky Fuller thought that, you know, we will always have the technology, will always move ahead, and, you know, don't worry. Uh, you know, we'll foul our nest like we have in the 20th century. But in my theater piece, the 20th century, I start off 1900, the Olympics are just started up again, and uh, the standing broad jump is, you know, an event, and it's one at 10 foot 6 inches. So I'm not going to put you through this, but I usually take my clothes off at this moment <laughs> and measure out 10 foot 6 inches and see if I can go for it. You know, if an, an overweight, you know, old fart can, you know, do, you know, what was the record in the Olympics at 1900. You <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? so, you know, We have a lot to be proud of in this century, you know. And I think for the sake of our kids that are coming along, that we need to not just let them know how much we fucked up, but that we have some things to be proud of. Mm -hmm. and, and we do have some role models that aren't on the 6 o'clock news, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that Jerry wrote a great poem today, did that make the 6 o'clock news? You know? So we, we have each other, though, you know, to spend. And we have Eugenia, you know? The, you see, Semina, uh, it, Wallace Berman's magazine was about dissemination. He's flipping, it's this little packet of poems and imagery, and he'd slap it in your hand, and boom, it felt great. And you got this little packet of seeds. Absolutely. So, so whatever seeds were thrown out tonight, and, and who knows, you know, uh, the, the 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 compost heap of my mind, man. You're welcome to it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you that I was at the Beat Show in New York, and I was at the Beat Show at the De Young, and I have to tell you that the audience was young, yes. and it was wonderful. Yes. Yes. It was like a new chapter in our history yeah. being being given as a gift. Right, absolutely. And uh, that's the problem with our art historians and the ac and the academy is they're 30 years behind. They forget that there are other chapters to write in the books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it takes a show like the Beat Show to, to show the way. Which, which had its flaws. There were things missing. I mean, I, I know that you're going to be told that you have some things missing <laughs> from wait, here. Wait until you know, the second one. Yeah, <laughs> especially yeah, the second one. But, but see, what it is, it's the donut and the hole. 
And the beach show was this incredibly beautiful donut, you know what I mean? And then there were these, these gaping omissions, right? And, and the same thing that you run into. But, but keep your eye on that donut that, that we have. And, you know, there, there'll be other donuts that will come down the line that will, you know, with some of them. I always say that my theater pieces, that's where you get the donut holes. Mm. Uh, come, to, come to my theater pieces and I'll give you what's missing. And this also, that's, it also goes back to when you were talking about as a child, looking for the impossible. I mean, you're looking right. through the donut hole. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, go for it. I mean, um, you know, what, what are some other ones? Simple ain't easy? Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. said that? What was the like story about the, pu the, the putti? The, 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 the putti? The, the <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. Oh, the story of the putti. Oh. oh, God. Yeah, you all know that story. Uh, <clears throat> freedom of expression. See, that's what it comes down to, because mm -hmm. with the beat show, I go on the Charlie Rose show, right? With Ginsburg and... Uh, I can't remember now, uh, Nate, Nat Hentoff. Uh, and they're both, their heads are down. This is, we're getting to the pooty, sir. And they're, <laughs> we're, and they're talking about uh, principles and, <clears throat> you know, convictions. And they're like really knotted brows and stuff. And, and I lean over to them and I said, well, isn't it true that y you can take your conviction for a felony back into court and have it dropped to a misdemeanor? <laughs> And everybody laughed, you know, and then the, then, the, then the tape started rolling for the Charlie Rose show. And so what I did, I showed, you know, slides like this, and I, I put forth, I thought the great contribution was the battle for freedom of expression, that that was engaged by a generation. Freedom of expression is like these doors, uh, saloon doors. You kick them open, they swing back shut. Every generation's got to kick them open. Don't assume that they're going to stay open. And so we have people like Rauschenberg's and Johns's that kick open doors and then people say, well, well, they're not kicking open any doors. It's someone else's turn to kick open doors. And so we had a march up, I guess it was Fifth Avenue to Lincoln Center uh, in 1964 when I lived in New York. And Ginsburg spoke and the Living Theater people uh, spoke. And um, Julian's message, everybody was, don't wait until they pass a law saying it's okay for you to paint your paintings or write your poems or make love. Do it now. That was Julian Beck's message. And I did a little flyer for that march in which I had the Statue of Liberty standing there instead of a torch, it's a bomb. And she has a little <coughs> pudo, pudi, what do you call it? Chero, the oh, angel, one of the Cupid, one of the whatever, Pudo. one of them. Pudo. 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 You see, I come from the Disney thing. Like, that sounds like the dog with the tail. <laughs> so anyway, this little winged creature is flying to, towards the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty has mouth taped shut, right? And this little Pudo is coming in with a big heart on him, right for it. So that's the little flyer that gets everybody to march through the streets of New York to Lincoln Center where we, by candlelight, you know, marched around for freedom of expression in 1964. You know, and, it's, and it still goes on today. And I think the internet is the, the, the next march. You know. okay. Now, I have a thing in my theater.